Welcome to Laker Connections on WTOP 10. I'm Jake Vandenbroek and to my left is Brandon Nash giving you updates on what's going on in Oswego sports. Let's start things off on the ice. How's the men's team looking, Brandon? Well, Jake, the men's hockey team started off their SUNYAC uh, weekend with a road game against Fredonia. With under a minute left in the first, the Blue Devils would get out on top. Then just a minute into the second, they would tack on another to double their lead. Defenseman Carter Allen got the Lakers on the board in the second, followed by another defenseman, Tyler Curry, tying up the game on a shorthanded goal. But the Devils would come back on the same penalty, score on the power play, and ride that lead to the end of the game, winning 3-2 and handing the Lakers their first loss of the season. After a tough loss to the Blue Devils, the Lakers were able to bounce back and cruise past Buffalo State on the road by a score of 4-1. Joseph Molinero was as efficient as a heat pump as he recorded a hat trick while Josh Isaac joined him in the scoring department. Cedric Hansen was strong in the net as he recorded 19 saves. With the victory over the Bengals, Oswego is now fifth in conference play. The Lakers' next game is this Friday as they host Brockport. Puck drops at... 7 p.m. Now, Brandon, should the Lakers consider Fredonia uh, to be a major threat in I, SUNYAC play? I mean, it's obviously early, but you first lost your uh, playoff game last year to them, and now coming back, lost your first matchup of the season to them. So definitely, it looks like Fredonia has the upper hand against Oswego. So they really, uh, when they play them coming into uh, next semester, obviously, they're going to have to play a lot more aggressive. They're going to have to find ways to uh, to score on the power play. But yeah, Fredonia has to be thought of as a threat right now. This team obviously can beat Oswego. They're going to go out and win other games, and they're going to be sitting pretty in the... I, personally, I think they'll be sitting pretty uh, pretty well in the playoffs, so Fredonia has to be a, a major threat, at least now. Oh, yeah, especially uh, the fact that they lost to Janet Seo in the SUNYAC Championship last year, and another thing that we have to keep in mind is the fact that uh, they, they didn't lose anybody. They have uh, their goalie, their starting goalie, who has been uh, very good in the net, and they their forwards, uh, the first and third line is still the same as last year, and with some good chemistry, uh, they are looking really good throughout the course of this season, I believe. But now they're going up against Brockport and Geneseo. They're home against Brockport on Friday, but then they are at Geneseo. Uh, what are your thoughts on Geneseo? Geneseo is a tough team. They have good, good all around. Definitely a team that can, that can match Oswego. And now Geneseo is going to get the advantage by playing uh, playing home. Um, and you look just uh, right here. Geneseo nine one and one on the season, uh, ranked second right now to Oswego, ranked six. So Geneseo is a tough team. Know that they know uh, you know that they can win. And Oswego is really going to have to play aggressive this entire weekend, both Brockport and Geneseo. But we also have to look at the women's hockey team as the women's hockey team took on, uh, took on Cortland uh, in their first meeting of the season as they held their annual Pink the Rink uh, night. The Lakers were looking for a spark on offense and could not get it. Emily Rose of the Red Dragons would score in the first minute of the second period on the power play. Oswego's Emma Morissette tied it up with just over five minutes left in the second. Both teams were sending back and forth shots. However, none found the back of the net. The game went into overtime with both teams failing to score, and the game ended in a 1-1 tie. Well, after a draw against Cortland and that one, the Lakers were able to get back to their winning ways as they stole a game on the road from the Red Dragons by a score of 3-1. Leah Sherwinski was able to find the back of the net twice, and Jean Marie Patton was able to score and dish out an assist. The Lakers' next game is Friday against the 2018 New HL champions rival Plattsburgh. That puck will be dropping at 3 p.m. Now, Brandon, uh, let's talk about this women's team now. Uh, what are they doing right? Um, I almost want to say that they're not doing too much right, but they're not doing too much wrong. It's the part of they're just playing. Uh, they're playing hockey right now. They have Rachel Farmer, who's really helped them out, kept them uh, kept them well, and obviously uh, had shutouts in both games against uh, against Buff State, and um, also helped them to a 4-1 win and kept uh, Cortland to one goal in both games. So it's really just Rachel Farmer's doing well right now. Uh, obviously, the offense is taking a while, but they're scoring in the third. They're scoring in those clutch moments and that's what matters. So really, it's been Rachel Farmer and clutch scoring, but they, they do need to start scoring in the first and second Yeah, periods. they really do. Their offense hasn't been really getting uh, much going efficiently. I mean, the last game they were here in the Murano Campus Center, uh, 
they were pretty much uh, playing in their zone, and Corlin had a bunch of golden opportunities uh, to get goals, especially with their special teams. Uh, Oswego, you got to give them a lot of credit that they were uh, very, they did a wonderful job in, uh, in terms of the penalty kill, but you can't just play in your own zone throughout the whole game. Then they had a good uh, golden moment where, oh, uh, just they were just there at the right time to uh, even the score up at one in the second period. But Brandon, like I said, you cannot uh, just play in your own zone. You're not going to win games like that. Oh yeah, the defense. The defense first off has been well, but like you said, they're going to have to win the neutral zone, get the puck in, and start going on offense. But when we come back, we are going to let everyone know just exactly how the men's and women's basketball team is doing here at Oswego. Stay tuned as you're watching Laker Connections here on WTOP 10. WTOP 10 movies on demand. Yeah, me too. You know, they have such a wide variety of films that anybody on campus can watch. And it's free. And it's free. How do I get to this movies on demand? Well, all you have to do is go to WTOP10.com and click the movies on demand tab. Hey, let's go watch one right now to review on our next show. <clears throat> hey, Hard, what's this? That's my resignation letter. You're resigning. Why? Because you're constantly ignoring me. You're half as active as you used to be, and you eat stuff like this. You've been putting me under a lot of pressure lately. That's why I'm ready to quit. I, I forgot. I'll, I'll do better. Please, don't quit on me. Okay, but remember, it's not what you say. It's what you do. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Let's go for a walk. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to a stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. Hello and welcome back to Laker Connections here on WTOP 10. Athletes are recognized each week for their accomplishments in their respective sports. This week, the Athletics Department has named Quinn Carey and Rachel Winhausen their Athletes of the Week. Men's basketball player Quinn Carey led his team to a win against Clarkson, going 7 of 13 from beyond the arc while grabbing six defensive rebounds. He also joined the 1,000 Career Points Club in his, in his collegiate career. Um, women's basketball player Rachel Winhausen had six points in the losing effort against Hilbert, shooting 50% from the field while leading the team with three assists and ten rebounds. The Oswego State men's basketball team defeated Nazareth last night by a score of 70-55. to Liam Sanborn and Tyler Pierre led the team in the scoring department with 18 points. Before the game, Quinn Carey was honored for reaching 1,000 points in his collegiate career. He finished the night with 15 points. The Lakers now improved to 4-0 on the season. They will be home this weekend as they host Geneseo on Friday, followed by a meeting with Brockport on Saturday. Now, with uh, so far with this men's basketball team, uh, what, do you, what are some of the good things we're seeing from them? Well, I mean, first off, and I know you and I can both talk about it, but the two transfers coming on, uh, Joe Sullivan and Quinn Carey. We already know shooting ability that we've said Quinn Carey and now 1,000 points, all of them three-pointers. But I want to look at Joe Sullivan. This guy is a two-way player, six foot five, and he used to play football as well. So he's getting into the dirty areas. He is already 42 rebounds in four games, averaging uh, 11 points a game, uh, averaging four, uh, four and a half rebounds a game and all 
also averaging uh, assists per game at 10.5. So the guy right now is an average triple double through four games. All right, he's doing great, and like I said, he's playing strong, play of aggressive, and that's exactly where the rebounds are coming. I really want to see what this kid can do. Yeah, but when they kick out the passes, Quinn Carey is the go-to. This man can really go off. Okay, you think you could dial up stuff on the inside? Oh, I'm just going to kick it out to Quinn Perry instead for that corner 320, just under 27 points that he's averaging, 11 rebounds, and uh, averaging 15 points a game, excuse me, but, uh, excuse me, that is assist, uh, my apologies, but... Quinn Carey, efficient as a heat pump. I've said it with all these players, but they're really hot right now. And it's going to be really interesting to see how they will turn out uh, once we uh, start getting in the SUNYAC play. Definitely want to see, like you said, this weekend, make sure that you watch all the games on WTOP. But we have to look at the women's team as they took on Rochester yesterday in a midweek out-of-conference game. Oswego's offense would hit an early roadblock, scoring eight in the first. After even play in the second, the Lakers stalled again, scoring only six the lack of offense saw both Raven Encarnacion and Ramatule C going a combined 3 of 23 from the field. The Golden Flyers would cruise to a 62-46 win, handing the Lakers their third straight loss. So obviously we look at this women's basketball team. Like I said, three straight losses have not been doing well on either side. Uh, what exactly is going wrong for this team? Stop turning over the basketball. You're averaging 21 turnovers in a contest? Come on. I don't even see this uh, occurring in uh, just any other Division Three basketball. This is just really crazy. Unbelievable stuff. Uh, and what they really need to do, uh, better shot selection. This is a team that really cannot put up good shots. They need to be uh, looking for passes inside. You got to find Rachel Winhausen or the transfer from Onondaga Community College, Samantha Britton. She is really good uh, with her uh, making moves inside the basket. She's really good at that. And then once they dial that equation up and then once uh, – teams are going to start adjusting it, then you can start kicking it out to your uh, your backcourt cards to, to make those three-point shots. That's what this woman's, uh, this that's what Sean Pinkerton needs to do for this woman's squad. I've already talked a little bit about Sean Pinkerton and have never really, never really uh, been a fan, so hopefully uh, he can turn around the season just a little bit. But speaking of, uh, speaking of Britain, you were actually able to uh, catch up with her um, before the team's practice. Yep, and stay yeah, tuned here yeah. how Britain ended up in Oswego after two years at Onondaga Community College. You're watching Laker Connections on WTOP 10. Want to know all the latest things pop culture? Tune in to Let's Talk About It every other Monday at 10 p.m. People think I'm trash, but they're wrong. Today I'm just an aluminum can, but one day I could be a stadium.
Welcome back to Lake Connections. Earlier today, I had the opportunity to chat with women's basketball player Samantha Britton. I'm here with Samantha Britton. Samantha, thank you for uh, taking the time to do this interview. Now, I heard that you are related to Brian and Eric Hamilton. Uh, they were very successful on the diamond for this Oswego program. And I was wondering if they motivated you to come here. Well, it is in the family, and they had a lot of success here, but it was somewhere that I was more familiar with than other schools, maybe like even at home. So it not, wasn't really like a huge factor for me, but being able to like call and kind of like their stuff is something that is cool and a lot of people don't get that opportunity to do. That's awesome. And now, now let's go to the court. Now, what aspect of your game comes the easiest to you? Um, probably post stuff. I mean, it has to do under the basket. I've been doing that since I started playing basketball, so that's the easiest. But since I started, I've tried to like measure out farther from the basket. Now, what are the, some of the things that uh, you struggle with uh, in terms of the game? Um, ball handling. Ball handling. Yeah. I mean, I've gotten better over the years. I had a personal trainer when I was in high school to try and help me pick up on the aspects of, like I didn't have down pat coming into college, but it's definitely one of the things that I still struggle with. Right. And now, what do you think you have improved to your game this season compared to your years at Onondaga Community College? Well, I looked at it as a fresh start. There were some things at OCC that I didn't like that I did personally, and just different experiences that I went through that I think have helped shape me as the person I am here now at Westville. Now, when you were at OCC, you led the team in points, and now you're on a new team. Uh, how weird is it uh, playing for a new team? Is it like a different offense and defensive style that Sean Pinkerton is running? Yeah, it's definitely a different transition, getting to know like a different team and a different coach and what they expect of you and stuff. But it's been an easy fit. Everybody's really welcoming and helping me with things when I need it. Yeah, absolutely. Now, what are some of the elements you can bring to this year's team? I think that I'm a strong team person all around. Like everybody, we're all one team. So we mess with up, we all mess up. So like just right. having like the leadership role and being able to keep everybody together and on like, the same team. Now this Friday, you guys will be entering conference play. You guys are gonna be facing Geneseo, Rockport, and all those teams all throughout the course of the season. How confident are you with this team? I think that we have a lot of potential. It's taken us to a little bit. Of Now, final question. What has basketball taught you that carry into some of the things in life? Um, just being able to work with different people, being in so many different programs from like OCC and out to us we go. It's definitely helped me be able to communicate better, like, better with people and it helped me learn more about myself than I think anything else will do. Absolutely. That is Samantha Britton, anyone? Samantha, thank you for taking the time. I appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Jake, fantastic interview there. But after the break, Ben Grieco and Matt Watling will join us for our Lakers showdown. Will I finally get my first win of the season? Stick around to find out. I'm a lot more confident and a lot more sure of my abilities. At Oswego is where I really found myself and became the person I am. You work hard and you play hard. I love the environment of SUNY Oswego. This new mom is struggling to get the skates just right. 
And now she's holding on for dear life. Her kids can see she may have broke her knees. They still love her, though she looks like she's attacked by killer bees. I'm allergic. You, you don't, don't have, have to be perfect to be the perfect parent. Thousands of siblings in foster care will take you just as you are. Welcome back to Laker Connections on WTOP 10. And as the winner of last week's showdown, I will be the host of this week's round of debates. And just in case you forgot, Brandon, it's all crayon, not crayon. <laughs> <laughs> all right, gentlemen. <laughs> Starting on the hardwood, will the Oswego State men's basketball team take on, as, excuse me, they will take on four straight SUNYAC opponents starting on November 30th against the SUNY Geneseo. Does this team improve on its 10 and 8, 10 and 8 conference record from last season? Um, I'm going to, you know, I'll start off Devil's Advocate. I'm going to go, no, I don't see too much of an improvement. Uh, they had a winning record last year. They played well, but I don't see them really getting much, uh, much higher up than that 10 and 8, 11 and 7. You know, they're going to have back and forth games, and I feel like it's going to be right at that, you know, 10 and 8, 11 and 7, maybe 12 and 6, but not a huge improvement. I just, just disagree with you here. Yeah. You lose two good seniors in Therabee and Shop, yes. But you're adding a guy like Quinn Carey. And this team this year is so different than in years past. They shoot the three extremely well, and that's what wins you games in basketball. You look at the Warriors in the NBA and even the Rockets last year. This team is shooting at a, almost a 56% clip from beyond the three-point line versus 34% last year. That's a huge difference, and that's what's going to put this team over the top. Yeah, I was just going to say those stats. You took, you took my thunder. But anyways, but yeah, I do agree with you, Matt. The thing is, Brandon, is that... This is a team that can knock down the three-point shot and transition, and they are looking really good. They are really hot offensively, and defensively they have they stepped it up. Jason Leone has this equation that, you know, I'll start it off going low with Tyler Pierre. I'll get be it to Sanborn for those easy layups. But then, once, like I said, once you figure out that equation, then you got to make the adjustments and start kicking it out. And this is a team that's got that hot uh, offense uh, balance. You can win with the three, but you can lose with the three. I think they're right. going to depend gonna, way gonna too gonna much on it. I'm going to cut right. you off. See, the, the big thing is, is that Geneseo lost Quinn Carey. Where'd he go? Oh, so he, he went go. to Oswego. I got to get that one to Jake. Ah, Jake's got point yeah. number one. Right. Jake's got point number one. What about me? Am I part of this? We have the same You're part of it. But well, Jake I, I, guess, I guess that's what you get for stealing my thunder. You I know? said it first. <laughs> I, I, I right, got to give it to next, Jake. I got to give it to Jake. But you read my all mind. Right, all right, all right. Okay. Flipping uh, over to women's basketball, we've seen a lot of new players in action. Jake, you just talked to Samantha Britton. Which first-year Laker do you think makes the biggest impact on the season so it's far? It's Samantha Britton. Come on. She has the most experience uh, in Division Three basketball. This is a transfer from Onondaga Community College. She led the team uh, at OCC uh, her sophomore year in the program with points. That is pretty phenomenal. And not only is she uh, is a really efficient scorer uh, with those, uh, in the shots from the post, she can – also attack the boards with her offensive rebounds look for her to give her team a bunch of opportunities but the one thing that she does need to work on is that i talked about uh, earlier today in that interview that you just saw is the ball handling skills that's the one thing she needs to work on if, if you want to you know talk, talk if you want to talk, 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 talk about ball handling skills and you want to you want to say who's going to have an impact sam dupe has come off the bench turnovers relatively Dupe's low she's six for bench. 18 what, what? You said off the bench, right? Sam, yeah. So she's not well, a starter. Okay. <laughs> and then she's making, she's <laughs> going, no, point. and this is, I mean, this is, Samantha at the, Britton's third on the team in minutes per You game. guys keep having the same points. So you can't, you guys have to have a different level. point. All right. Then how are you going to let Ben? Brent. Sam Dupe, Sam Dupe, like I said, off the bench, <laughs> six for 18 right now. She's shooting great. And I think she's going to be a starter soon because I've already shots. seen. Yes. Oh, and there's true. only been four that games. So she's averaging four and a half shots a game. All right, she's play all right because she's not starting and she will be soon because we've already seen Raven. So she she's, we, we've seen Raven and C. She's going to make an impact. That's the oh question. She's wow. going Brandon, to make I, an I, impact. Uh, you know what? This question reminded me of the crane question where Brandon just went off. 
I'm, I'm going to give it to him. I got Let's Brandy go. here, you know? I gotta, you got to give the other dog a chance sometimes, you know? <laughs> uh, Dupe is, like I said, she's, gonna, right. she's right. going right. to start okay. soon. All right, now we go to the ice arena where Oswego State women's hockey will be taking on national powerhouse Plattsburgh. The big thing is Plattsburgh has not allowed a goal in five of its seven games. Casey Abbott has two, five shutouts. Does Oswego State score multi -goal, multiple goals in one game apiece this weekend? <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait, are you saying one goal over two games the, or one goal per game? Like, do they score multiple goals per game? Sorry. Oh, no, I don't even think they score more than one goal the entire weekend. This is a team in Plattsburgh that's, what, third in the nation? They're one yeah. of the best teams historically in all of, a historical program in terms of women's hockey. And this Lakers team, they're scoring 1.75 goals a game in New HL con in conference play. And they're not a great offense. They really aren't. And this Plattsburgh team is just way too good. It is a streak. It's it's a streaky offense, but I do think that at least in one of the games, there's a chance for the streaky offense to hit. Rachel Farmer is uh, is definitely a good goalie, and I keep talking about her, but I think she's going to maintain and contain uh, Plattsburgh. And then you all can't get an offense going if you can't get the damn puck out of your zone, Brandon. Come all right. on, let's be serious. This uh, we saw this against Cortland. They were facing a very struggling Cortland team, and they even put a lot of pressure on this Oswego team, Brandon. Let's keep that in mind. That's not going to happen this week's a number uh, to this uh, Plasper team. It's not going to happen. The next day after Corlin, they came back and put up four. So uh, they might not do well in the first game, but they come back the next day. And I think middle of the day, hey man, Saturday, the, so the only right, hockey Matt, that's want, happening in Oswego. Do you want a word here? I just think that they were held to one goal in a single game against the worst team in the new HL. The worst team in the new uh, HL who hasn't right. won a game yet. I know, I know Brandon didn't, or excuse me, Matt didn't talk much there, but that final point got me. Sold me, Matt, with a point. All We're right. 1 1 right. 1. All right. 1 all. all right. Potentially last question. We'll find out. Okay. Men's hockey squad is taking on number two, SUNY Geneseo, this weekend. In the last season, their first matchup, they did tie them in overtime. Will the Lakers be able to capture two more points against SUNY Geneseo? Oh, 100%. There's not even a question here. They tied on the road, but they also won. 4-2 at home. We know, uh, So we already know that the Lakers can win there. It's going to be a stretch. They have to beat Brockport the night before, but I think that they will be able to beat Brockport. Momentum going in, and I just think that, that this team is playing better right now. They already faced their first loss, so right now they're, they're, they definitely have a Brent, chance. Brendan, they have a chance, but to be so dismissive of this Geneseo team is kind of weird. You know, they are one of the nationally ranked teams in the nation. They're one of the best teams in the nation, but number, I do number agree two. with you overall. Number two. They're number number two, two right now, yep. I but do agree with you there. I think that this is a team in Oswego State that is so good. You know, I think the Brockport game is going to be a really good warm-up for them and a tune-up because you're playing a team that's gotten votes in the D3 polls. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jake, no. anything? Yeah, I mean, it's not going to happen. When you're facing okay. Geneseo, they're... they're They'll take care of uh, business against Brockport on Friday, but you're going in, Geneseo. Tough environment to play. The students are rowdy. They're not going to win this one. And will it be a close game? Yes. Three to two is your final. Mm. I, right. got one, I got right. one line for you. That oh. second line, Travis Broman, Pacero, and Spink, come back together. They're going to have at least one or two goals in that game. Okay. All right. All right. I, 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 like, the I like the arguments. I like the arguments. I don't know if I want to keep the winner until my last question. All right. Should I, so should I give you the is winner? Is it a tie? Do, it, what do, how do you guys want to do it? Let, let's call it a tie. Everyone made good points here. Yeah. Okay. You know, I, last I question. Go. We got, question. we got. Yes. So this Friday, as we all very well know, is the annual teddy bear toss for the men's hockey team against the College of Brockport. Last year, 736 bears were tossed on the ice after Cam Barry's goal. Now here's the big one. Plus or minus 800 bears this Friday. Plus. Minus. These two, plus. Oh, here, minus. Here's the reason. These two teams, fourth and fifth seed, uh, I know that Brockport Media is coming to this game. They're going to get some of their fans here. We're definitely going to have more Bears in this one, Ben. No minus, doubt about it. Minus. Both men's and women basket, women's basketball is playing Friday night. Although they don't draw a crowd, they will draw a crowd that will take away from the Oswego one. Also, the snow has been bad, and I don't think too many There's people really plan. I game. don't think too many people planned <laughs> this weekend to go out and go grab some teddy bears. teddy bears. They're not the sitting arena, in their bro. home, and there's no way they have them Matt, now. They're Matt, not taking Matt. them. You can get teddy bears at the arena. That's all there is to it. People aren't going to spend money. People aren't going to do like that. We're, we're, broke, we're broke college kids, and yes, it's a donation, but unfortunately, we're uh, all broke college kids, and I don't okay. think we're hitting over 800. That 736 nah. crowd was great last year, and I think plus. it's going to stay at about that 7, 750. Big plus. All Watch right. It. All right. Will Brandon get his first win this weekend? Uh, this week, excuse me. Will he get the first win? No, I got to give it to Matt. Matt's got it. 
I'm done. I'm done. There's Second. one last show. I'm right. done. We're leaving. Right. Final that, one. That is yes. all the Jake, what do we got to find? Next week will be a jam-packed episode as if we have our Whiteout preview season finale. And I will be making my last episode. See you next week.